I know my own best VPN choices, but what does AI think? I asked ChatGPT to give me five VPN recommendations along with their strengths and weaknesses. But is it accurate? Well, I will be the judge of that. So I'm guessing this is in no particular order because ChatGPT's first two best VPN service choices are a little peculiar. GPT picked out Proton VPN, highlighting their strong privacy policy and Switzerland jurisdiction. But I'd say a bigger point is Proton being open source, which means their source code is public and is constantly being reviewed for vulnerability. Now, the fact that Proton VPN is supported by a wide range of platforms or that it has a kill switch is nothing groundbreaking. That's what every proper VPN has or should have. ChatGPT also said that Proton VPN can block malware, ads, and trackers, which uh, isn't entirely correct. Yeah, it can block ads and malicious websites, but not malware itself. I only know one VPN that can do this, which is on the list too, by the way. Finally, the only weakness, in ChatGPT's opinion, is the limit of the Proton VPN free version. I agree, but at the same time, it forgets to mention that Proton VPN is quite expensive compared to other VPN providers, or the fact that it often struggles with opening streaming content, as lots of services have blocked Proton VPN IP addresses. Sure, it's not like a chatbot needs to watch Netflix. Get back to work. But that's a significant downside to casual VPN users. As for Winscribe, ChatGPT seemed to completely confuse the free version with the paid plan. Yes, Winscribe doesn't limit simultaneous connections, and the free plan has a 10 gigabyte per month limit. At this point, I thought it's talking about the free VPN version for sure, right? But then it doesn't mention that it limits you to 11 locations or the fact that it doesn't work well for things like streaming. The only bad thing it mentions is the fact that Winscribe doesn't have a recent audit. And yet, not a single word on the fact that Winscribe's jurisdiction is within the US, which is part of an intelligence sharing alliance. Now, I'm not saying Winscribe is unsafe, as it's open source and has a no logs policy, but keep this little alliance thing in mind. It's it's gonna come up later. Overall though, I myself wouldn't say these two are the best VPN options ever. I'd say they're one of the best free VPN picks instead. Yes, they have some annoying limits on locations and bandwidth in Winscribe's case, and they won't really work for stuff like streaming. That said, restrictions are common for any free VPN, and these two are among the most capable options. Next up on ChatGPT's top VPN list was ExpressVPN. The chatbot praised its speed and versatility? Again, most VPNs support a variety of platforms these days, so that is nothing new. But I'll give this a pass because ExpressVPN is a uniquely good VPN for router choice due to a feature called device groups, which allows you to assign different locations to different, aha, you guessed it, device groups. Anyway, ChatGPT also says ExpressVPN has 2,000 servers in 160 cities, which is just speculation now. ExpressVPN hides their server count, and the previous server count was about 3,000, so that 2K number just sort of comes out of nowhere. That said, I have to agree with the points about ExpressVPN being a good VPN for gaming and streaming. Is it the best VPN to watch Netflix? Meh, debatable. To me, Surfshark was more consistent when accessing content, but I'm not about to have a fight with ChatGPT over this. ExpressVPN works perfectly fine for this purpose as well. What I will fight about, though, is misinformation. Come on, dude, you're supposed to have new info since, you know, you're connected to the internet now. So what's this about ExpressVPN only allowing five simultaneous connections? Ahem, <coughs> it's eight. I guess somebody scraped the wrong website. Oh, and it also forgot to mention the Skyscraper High Express VPN price. There's a good reason why it's often labeled as the most expensive VPN. The price is a little more justified now that they introduced a password manager, but overall you can get much better price deals from other best VPN provider picks that carry even more functionality. Moving on. ChatGPT also included CyberGhost in its top VPN list, but user-friendly for Mac users? Really? Out of all the VPN Mac apps, CyberGhost is my least favorite. Their Windows app is much more streamlined and better looking with a neater setting section and 
I found that the Cyber Ghost Mac kill switch is unreliable. It only works sometimes, which is an IP leak just waiting to happen. Funnily enough, a Cyber Ghost con that ChatGPT pointed out doesn't make sense either. Other VPNs offer broader service location options. Huh? Since when? CyberGhost has over 11,000 servers in 100 countries. That said, I agree with the point about CyberGhost being less versatile. It doesn't have almost any additional features. So it's a very basic VPN provider. Finally, we have NordVPN on the ChatGPT VPN service list. Let's see what Chatbot says. Highly rated for privacy. Check. Wide server network. Check. Though it covers 61 countries, not 60, with a very recent addition of virtual Indian servers, which, by the way, very, very few providers have. The part about AES-256 encryption is also not entirely true. That's because the encryption comes with the older protocols, while the main Nordlinx protocol uses ChaCha20. Hey, but at least ChatGPT said NordVPN is a fast VPN. And I can definitely agree on that. Now, it weirdly skipped all the NordVPN features, and I have a bit of a problem with that, since compared to other VPNs on the ChatGPT list, NordVPN is more versatile, at least in my opinion. Like, remember that point about Proton VPN being able to catch malware? While it's not true for Proton, NordVPN can do exactly that. This comes from the threat protection feature, which also doubles as a pretty good ad blocker. Okay, now let's see about cons. While NordVPN is secure, its membership in certain international surveillance alliances is not clearly stated, which might be a concern. A, a what now? Now this is entirely false. It is true that some VPNs reside within the grasp of the 5, 9, or 14 Eyes Alliance, like Windscribe, for example. But even then, they have no logs policies. In NordVPN's case, its jurisdiction lies in Panama, which is not part of any alliances and in general is considered a privacy-friendly place. So I am a little bit lost about where this point comes from. I think it's safe to say AI doesn't really qualify as a VPN service expert, at least when it comes to the current version of ChatGPT. Wrong information occurs a little bit too often, and it fails to mention some important points. Plus, some of its picks could be replaced with better ones, like where's Surfshark or Mulvad? If you want some fact-checked, top-rated VPN content, you're better off here on YouTube, so make sure to check out my VPN reviews, among all the other cool tech topics we cover. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. My channel's still very small, so every subscriber feels like a huge milestone. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.